Hi friends, Fairy Dazzle here, and I am wishing you all a wonderful Christmas holiday. Today I am going to read to you a story that has yet to be illustrated, and I thought I would put it as a challenge to you and your families to see if you would consider illustrating a story as it's read. So what I have done is I have modeled the idea of illustrating a story very, very quickly. Uh, this is rather embarrassing because I put pressure on myself to literally sketch as fast as I could with little stick people and with markers trying to create an image that would tell the story uh, in a very, very fast way. I am trying to encourage you and your families to engage in art, to have fun, to play. Not be shy of what comes out on the paper. It's kind of a little bit like gesture drawing. So I've ended up producing 10 of these pictures. I will share them with you. Like I said, they're pretty rough, but they were fun and I played. And that is the most important part as I tried to tell the story through picture. The illustrations are, as I said, very fast. They are very simple. Uh, some would say, very dazzle. Are they your best work? No, they are not my best work, but they were fun work. Christmas Triangle Stars to the Rescue. In Santa's workshop this one Christmas Eve night, all was quiet, everyone was clean out of sight. The elves zoomed to their families, dragging their feet so tired. They left the workshop in a mess, not cleaning and recycling as required. The door creaked open and a soft hum could be heard. A pitter-patter and glittery wings filled the room like a small bird. The sparkle fairy arrived on time and ready to clean. But suddenly she let out a delicate scream. Ah! Oh no, what do we have here? She asked in dismay. The elves left tools, paint, glue, and even wood in such disarray. Here's a stack of perfectly good wooden sticks. They should be recycled. The elves could make beautiful crafty tricks. She started her washing, sorting, polishing, and sweeping, moving the sticks into the recycling corner for safekeeping. As she finished, she sealed the room with her fairy glitter. Off she skipped to help Mrs. Claus, who was in a flitter. Once the door shut, out came Morris, a frantic, squeaky little mouse. He was in a panic when he looked out the window of Santa's house. The sky was cloudy and there were no guiding stars or even a moon. Morris knew that this would be a problem for Santa as he had to leave soon. You see, Santa always used the stars to guide his way around the globe. This night, Santa didn't know he was too big busy fixing his fur trimmed red robe. In minutes it would strike 11. There was only an hour for a solution. Tapping his little toes, Morris said, I need to find a resolution. While he stood thinking with ideas flying in his head like a snow flurry, out from the crack in the wall came a troop of his little friends so furry. Without skipping a beat and saying a word, they ran into the big wood stack, then organized themselves into four teams of four energy they did not lack. Timmy, the teeniest, weeniest mouse of all, did shout, Let's begin our competition, just watch us problem solve, well, have no doubt. Morris stood in awe and wonder as the first team started to brag. Watch us build a star, we'll beat the other three teams in a tail wag. The four did grab three sticks, two short and one long. First, let's take these and make a triangle, a shape that's known to be strong. 
They placed the longest rod on the ground. Then they took a short piece, attaching it with string that they wound. Next, they took the third stick and attached it to the other end. But as they pulled the sides, the bottom would not stay straight but bend. Frustrated, the once cheeky mice scratched their heads and looked downcast. They were not able to progress and complete the task. The next team did grin and say, Yippee, watch us. We will create a star without any fuss. Grabbing three wood pieces with excitement and chuckles, they attached each corner, creating a triangle with straight sides without buckles. We did it! They admired their triangles, shouting with glee. One said, let's measure each side. I predict that each will be different, you'll see. They placed a ruler alongside and sure enough they had the proof. 80, 60 and 40 centimeters, a scaling triangle they measured like sleuths. Let's make another triangle that is congruent, in other words, the same. Taking the two scaling triangles and made a six point star that looked a bit lame. A little lopsided yet cute, they presented it to Morris with pride. Maybe this can help guide Santa as he flies through the dark skies outside. Not letting Morris answer, the third team interrupted without skipping a beat. We will make a more balanced star with isosceles triangles. It will be an easy feat. Scampering with a meter stick, they grabbed two sticks that measured 80 centimeters. Let's take this one for the bottom. It measures 40 centimeters. The triangle will be neater. They saw this isosceles could be cut in half after they attach the ends. This triangle has one line of symmetry, exclaimed Morris to his friends. They copied it, then matched up the lines of symmetry, gluing them down. Look, we have a six-pointed star that could be a crown. Their moment of pride was shattered by the fourth team's determined cry. We can make an even more spectacular star, one that will look radiant in the night sky. We will make two triangles with three 80 centimeter sides in length. It will be balanced, made with equilateral triangles having great strength. So they finished the perfect triangles and assembled them into a star with six points, showing how each triangle had three lines of symmetry leading from each joint. Morris was truly impressed, then with 10 minutes to spare, fell into a mousy, momentous muddle and sweat. How can I choose one star over the other? My mouse pals who've worked hard will be upset. The teeny weeniest mouse of all turned out to be the wisest of them all. Let's pick them all, not starting an argument and a brawl. The three stars can represent the wise men, each unique and bearing a gift. Now I see something sparkle left that can help us get these shining and in the sky with a big lift. He dashed to the fairy dust and glitter in a mound. He began to sweep it up without saying a sound. Darting back to the stars, he sprinkled the magic dust, saying the following rhyme with a dance that was creative and robust. Off we will launch you into the sky so together you can shine so bright lighting our skies with warm, radiant beams and guiding Santa's flight, reminding us of how we can all shine together for one cause, supporting the giving heart of jolly S Santa Claus. With all the huffing and puffing, the mice carried each star outside onto the snow-covered porch, lifting and tossing them with all their mouse muscle might. The stars lighted like a massive torch. The mesmerized mice stood staring as the murky gray sky was lit by this dazzling, brilliant sight. Seconds later, the reindeers flew into the sky as Santo bellowed merry christmas to all and may peace and goodwill reign tonight <laughs>